Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. A large part of the country has been dealing with pretty extreme heat as we've went throughout the summer months and a lot of folks probably getting sticker shocked by seeing those uh, electric bills and those energy bills. Today we're talking with Mandy Mahoney. Uh, she's with the Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Mandy, thanks for joining us. Uh, first question, you know, for folks that are dealing with this uh, extreme heat, what are some little things that we may not think of that could help to conserve energy and help out those energy bills. Well, thank you, Brady, for having me today. I'm thrilled to join you. And I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, and I know that high heat. And I think first and foremost, what's important to the, us, the Department of Energy, is that everybody stays safe. So please, we'll talk about these tips today, but if you feel like you're not safe, we encourage you to go to a cooling center in your community. Uh, but what are some of the things you can do? You know, and I think about things for my house, first I ask myself, am I helping my air conditioning work? And then second, am I eliminating anything that's gonna introduce any new undue heat into our house? And so on the, in the first question, what can I do to help my air conditioner work? Go out and look at your air conditioning unit outside, making sure there's no branches or grass or anything that's, that's impairing how it's working. Secondly, are all your vents open? My dog loves to move his dog bed right over one of the, the vents. And so, cause I'm sure it's cool for him, but removing that his dog bed so that all of the vents in the house can work, very helpful. Also keeping your window shades closed during the day, not introducing that new sun in that's gonna warm up the room. And then in the second category, as you think about reducing any heat you're introducing into your house, one thing to think about is what are your big appliances that you're running during the day? So maybe you don't run your dryer, or if you, if, could you even use a clothesline, go back to things that our grandparents did and not even use the dryer at all? Or what about cooking? You know, my, I'm a big cook, and so the stove and the burners and the oven, that heats up my whole downstairs. So what I do is on the weekends, I use my grill and I double or triple what I cook so that I can just pop things in the microwave during the week and not heat up my house in undue ways. So when you're, you're talking about heating up the house and stuff, is, is there, you know, a lot of times we like to cool our house off as much as get as comfortable during the, the summertime. Is there a, a good temperature range that kind of helps to let that air conditioner rest, but still allow us to be comfortable in the heat? There certainly is. I also think this is a source of much marital disagreement you will often find. So people, of course, have to figure out what works for them. You know, thinking about, is there a degree or two you could adjust it where you're still gonna be comfortable, especially at night? You know, can you make it a degree warmer or two? Or when you're out, when you're running your errands or going to the grocery store, could you adjust your thermostat a few degrees so that your um, your AC is not having to work as hard? So, you know, it, when this starts to get to where you get some of the, the smart home stuff, is a well, programmable thermostat probably something smart that would help out on that? Well, yes, definitely. There's a number of technologies out on the market that these thermostats, now you can let it learn your behavior and then it can adjust on its own. If it, for instance, detects you're not home, maybe you know, you've know you gone out for the day, it will adjust the temperature uh, naturally. So you don't even have to worry about it. So it's a, I love having mine. So, you know, we, we talk about the thermostats and stuff like that. Are there, you know, when it comes to other ways you can save electricity, you know, are, are there, you know, the light bulbs and running some appliances, is that stuff that really can help out on stuff like this? It is, you know, again, when you think about what makes you have a high energy bill, well, first it's, do you have leaky windows and doors? We often talk about it in the cold, but you know, it's just as important here in the hot states that you have, uh, use insulation, that you caulk as much as you, any, any openings in your house so that you're not letting that hot air in. Uh, so thinking about, do you need to upgrade the insulation in your attic? Like you might, it, you might be overdue for doing something like that. Putting insulation in is the best way to not only make your house more comfortable, but also drop your energy bills. And then secondly, who thinks about their water heater? 
you can set it. You can actually adjust the temperature on your water heater down. And that's a big, big energy suck, a big appliance. So adjusting the temperature that your water heater is set at is another super easy way to uh, reduce your energy bills. So when you were, you know, the water heater, great, great example. So when we start talking about energy efficiency, I know that's part of what your office does, you know, is it mainly finding new appliances and newer stuff? Or is there, is there ways you can make maybe older appliances and stuff efficient? Sure. Yeah, there are definite ways you can make older appliances more efficient. I think one is washing machines, for instance. We encourage people to wash on cold. Then not using hot water, that saves you energy. You don't have to buy a new appliance or anything to do that. Also, like I said, we're changing the temperature on your water heater. Third, thinking about when do you need to run your dryer versus can you uh, air dry things, either on a drying rack or on a clothes rack. I know in these high temperatures, it is your stuff will dry really fast outside. Um, and then thinking about the insulation in your attic, in the insulation in your house, like a dr making your house more energy efficient. That way, we highly recommend before you even ever think about buying new appliances, because then you can buy an appliance that's the right size for your house not something that's oversized um, and it's gonna be more expensive and use more energy. So when you're talking about getting new appliances, I'm guessing a lot of the newer, say refrigerators and washers and dryers and stuff like that are significantly more energy efficient than stuff that we've had several years ago. They are, yes. Um, the standard for appliances continues to raise to get more efficient so that not only is it work better for us consumers, but also that it's using less electricity and you know allowing us to spend money on other things like food and medicine, things that we really need in our lives. So I, I found on y'all's website, it was interesting, something I hadn't thought of. Is there a way about getting an energy assessment for your house to find out kind of where you're good and not? What, what is that and how does that help homeowners? Sure, yeah, energy assessments are so helpful. One, if you go on the DOE website, there we have information about how you can do your own energy assessment. Uh, another thing though, is that there are wonderful contractors who can come in and do this. And oftentimes our electric utilities uh, will have rebates so that it'll help pay for the cost of that audit. Speaking of renewable energy, and I know a lot, there's a lot of credits you can get for putting in solar panels and stuff like that. I know a lot of people wonder what's the, the payoff of, is it worth the money you're gonna put into solar panels to how long it takes to, to save money? Is that something that people could think about that could help their power bills, maybe not this summer, but moving forward? For sure, solar is a great solution, especially in places like Texas where y'all have many, many sunny days. Uh, but the cost of solar panels is gone, going down year over year and also incentives from the utilities incentives um, that the federal government offers, it can make the payback much shorter than people often perceive. And, but I will say, before you put solar on, you really need to think about making sure that you have all the insulation you need in your attic so that you can buy the right size sol solar panels that are gonna uh, meet the needs of your house. And the solar company that comes out to do the assessment, they will look at your power bills and they'll tell you how big a set of solar panels you need. Um, and they will also talk to you about how to make your home more efficient so that you only need to spend what you need to spend to get those solar panels. So you brought up a really interesting point at the beginning of the interview. You were talking about no matter what, you need to keep cool. So what do you say to people that, you know, they're, they're pinching pennies here or there. You still need to be safe and not worry as much right. about that electric bill compared to, uh, you know, not keeping safe just to try to save some money. It's true. I mean, no, these are really high temperatures, fatal temperatures that y'all are seeing. And first and foremost, the most important thing is to be safe. And so please know about the cooling shelters in your community. Please consider using fans to keep the air circulating. Um, please consider closing the windows in your house, uh, the shutters to keep the extra sun out. And those are just some simple things that'll, you know, even reducing the temperature a degree or two can make a huge difference. 
So your office is the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. What, what all does your office do as part of the Department of Energy? So what our office does is we work with people from all over the country to understand what their needs are so we can continue to help people save money, live in efficient homes or small business owners, how they can also um, reduce their power bills so that they can focus their money on running their business. Uh, and then we work, we do a lot of research and development. We work with uh, different universities, uh, including different universities there in Texas to determine how do we keep pushing ourselves so that the future appliances, the future way we build homes, that it is really good for all of us as we uh, deal with these increased storm events um, and increased high heat. The way we build houses, the way that we adapt to this is gonna have to continue to evolve to keep us all safe uh, and to you know, support our communities. Well, Mandy, I appreciate you taking time with us. Uh, some good tips and like I said, some of the short term, some more long term that people can take. And I think we're all ready for the uh, summer heat to be gone. Yes, well, thank you very much.